Now joining us on the Peerless Boilers Hotline, former NFL All-Pro offensive lineman, that's Tony Baselli. Tony, Zach Gelb here at TalkUSA.TV. Thank you for joining me, and how are you doing on this fine evening? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great myself. I know you played with the Jacksonville Jaguars for many years where you were an All-Pro, as you mentioned. You were great on that offensive line before you went down south to Houston. With that being said, the Jaguars, this current team, they have a new opening at the head coaching position. Who is one person you would like to see running that team next year from the head coaching standpoint? You know, I don't know if I, there's one guy I can name. I think it's, you know, it's, it's about getting the, the right type of individual. I think it's important in the NFL you have a guy who obviously is a great leader and can motivate young people. The young, you know, when I say young people, you know, younger, not college, not the college age, but guys who have a lot of money and who have a lot of uh, opportunities, and you need to be able to have a strong personality, personality to get all of them going in the right direction and believe in what you're doing. So I think having that type of guy with the right character is, is important. And, uh, you know, I think... Sean Tom, the new owner, and Gene Smith will do a good job of picking the right guy. The Houston Texans, they've been decimated with injuries throughout the course of the season. Uh, they lost their starting quarterback and a prolific uh, pass rusher in Mario Williams. They will face the Cincinnati Bengals this week with T.J. Yates under center. Do you think T.J. Yates can win a playoff game? Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's going to be one uh, one rookie quarterback who's going to win a, a playoff game because they got two of them playing each other. So I, I do think he can, you know. It sounds like his uh, health is okay, and his left, it was his left shoulder, so he got dinged up a little bit. But he should, you know, he should be fine in the way the Houston Texans play. Uh, they're more of a run first, and they play great defense and play action pass. I think he should be just fine. A.J. Green, who's also a rookie, he's been phenomenal this season. Jerome uh, Simpson as well, and Jermaine Gresham, who had that acrobatic uh, touchdown uh, catch a few weeks ago. They will face the Houston Texans secondary this week. Break up this matchup from the passing game of Andy Dalton to his receivers to the Houston Texans secondary. Well, you know, this, this Houston defense is much better. And, uh, you know, Johnson, Jonathan, Jonathan Joseph is, you know, their big free agent acquisition. The corner had a great year. He's Trying a little bit of an ankle right now, but I think he'll be fine. And uh, and he's going to, you know, have his hands full with AJ Green on the outside. He's a special receiver. He is a rookie, but he's not playing like one. And you know, Andy Dalton has a lot of confidence. They can throw it up up high, and the AJ's going to go get it. And you got Gresham working in the middle of the field, so it's a, it's a nice uh, one-two combination. And you don't forget Cedric Benson running the ball. So uh, Cincinnati is uh, is a team that's. It's going to be a tough out. They're going to be able to go in. They're going to play great defense, and, and they have the ability with that young quarterback to move the ball on anybody. You were with the Texans when they first started. You know how passionate this fan base is. This is the first time that this team gets a chance to play in January football in the playoffs, and you played in a few playoff games yourself, and they have a home field advantage here at Reliance Stadium. Just talk about home field advantage. Is it really that big as some people think it is? Oh, yeah, I think it is. I think it's huge, especially in the playoff. It's going to be loud. It's going to be a lot of energy. And, and uh, you know, you don't have to travel. You're right there. You stay in your routine. And it's always nice to play in front of the home fans. Tony Baselli joining us here on TalkUSA.TV with Zach Gelb. And let's go to the game, uh, the hometown game here, the Falcons and the New York football Giants. Matt Ryan, he lost to the Green Bay Packers last year, got blown out in his own building when the Falcons were the one seed. And you've played in a few playoff games like I've mentioned before, and you have lost a few playoff games. Talk about what you learn when you lose a playoff game and what Matt Ryan could possibly improve on come this Sunday. Well, you know... I don't know how much you learn. I mean, the funny thing about the playoffs is each, you know, I guess the only thing you learn whether a win or lose is the experience, and, and you get more comfortable in the situation. But, you know, the beautiful thing about the playoffs is it's one and done. You know, you win, you win, you go on, you lose, you go home. And so it's uh, every opportunity is different, and you don't know how many opportunities you're going to get. So I think, you know, you got to be focused, you got to be ready. And, and Matt Ryan's going to be able to draw on the past experience that he's had playing in playoff games and, and so I don't think the moment will be too big. I think, you know, they have a veteran group, and they won't be overwhelmed. Now, they might not beat the Giants. The Giants I think the Giants with that pass rush are going to give them problems, and Eli Manning's playing very good. But it won't be because the moment's too big. I mean, Matt Ryan will be ready to play. 
But one guy uh, Matt Ryan has to look out for this week has been Jason Pierre-Paul. JPP has had a phenomenal season so far. He's a standout pro bowler. We just saw what he meant in that Dallas game a few weeks ago. And you're an offensive lineman. You played the game. You know the position better than anyone. How would you try to contain Jason Pierre-Paul if you were going up against him coming up on Sunday? Well, you know, you, gotta, you, you, better be, you better play every snap hard. You better be physical and you better get after him. And, and he's, you know, good footwork, good technique because he'll embarrass you. And he's, he's a special athlete. He's got the long arms. And so you got to get your hands on him and try to control him physically. Uh, and then, I, you know, and then if I was playing left tackle, I'd hope we'd run right at him so I could get physical with him and try to, uh, you know, beat on him a little bit. But it's going to be, you know, I, I look for because I don't, you know, the – the Falcons aren't great at left tackles. Uh, you know, I think it's Z, Z Tech is going to be playing. Sam Baker's hurt. Uh, so I, I look for them to chip uh, Jason Pierre Paul quite a bit. You know, Michael Turner on the way out or uh, Jason Snelling taking some shots at uh, Pierre Paul before they go out in the route. Let's go to the Giants offense here real quick. Eli Manning has had a breakout season, 26 touchdowns, has been great in the fourth quarter, but Victor Cruz has 1,500 yards on the year. This was a guy that didn't even get drafted. He's a complete stud. How do you think the Falcons will try to stop or try to slow down Victor Cruz and Eli Manning this week? Because those two guys have been a great one-two punch this year. Well, yeah, the thing is, you got, you know, Hakeem Nicks on the other side. So it's not like you can just try to take away one receiver because they got, they're pretty good outside. And I think so the way you have to do is you got to rush the passer. You know, John Abraham's going to have to have a big day and, and try to make, uh, Eli Manning very uncomfortable in the pocket and move him off his spot. Uh, otherwise, you know, he's going to find guys down the field and he's got two good receivers and, and Victor Cruz is having a great, a great year and, uh, he's a playmaker. He, he's made some big plays the last couple of weeks to get him into the playoffs. One more note here with the New York football Giants. When you were in Jacksonville, Tom Coughlin was your coach as well. Uh, tell us a little bit more about Tom Coughlin and one thing he really stresses when it comes time for the playoffs. Well, the one thing with Tom, you know you're going to be prepared. He's going to have that team ready. They're going to know every situation. They're going to be fully aware of what's on the line and, and what they need to do to win. And, uh, and so you, you always felt that way, that you were ready for any situation when you played on Tom's team. So... Uh, he's one of the great coaches. I, I think he's probably a little bit underrated and, and uh, doesn't get the credit he deserves. And I think this year what he's done with that team with all the injuries is pretty remarkable. So, uh, you know, that giant team will be ready to play come Sunday. Does it surprise you that he's one of the most disliked coaches in the league by players in those polls that we always see? Yeah, you know, when you play for him, he's not always fun because he's, he's tough and he's grinding and he's demanding. But... Uh, you respect them. And, you, and the funny thing is it would be great to do a poll of guys who, who have played for him and no longer play. Uh, and I bet you'd get a much different result because he's probably one of the most – he might not be the most liked always, but he's, I guarantee he's one of the most respected coaches in the NFL. We're talking to former All-Pro offensive lineman Tom Baselli, uh, Tony Baselli, and Tony uh, Tim Tebow this week, playoff game uh, against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Are you a Tim Tebow believer? Uh, I'm a believer in the type of guy, and the guy he is and how hard he competes. I think the the book's still out whether he can, you know, be a franchise quarterback. And obviously, he's got to get better at throwing the ball. But the kid, the kid, uh, you know, they wouldn't be in the playoffs without him. He's tough. He gets after you. You know, I think teams have maybe uh, figured out the running game, the option game, a little bit, and put some tough situations. And uh, I don't know if he's ready to carry that team with just throwing the ball. So, but. Uh, I think it's way too early to make a judgment whether he can or can't do it as a quarterback. Uh, but you can definitely say that the kid is a leader and uh, he, he's a valuable asset on that team. Like you said, it's win or go home in the playoffs, and the Steelers, they have been decimated with injuries. Uh, Ryan Clark will be out for this game. Their starting cornerback will be out for this game, and they lost Rashard Mendenhall. He just tore his ACL. Uh, you had injuries before. How do you rebound with the current group in there right now so that team is ready to go come Sunday at 4.30? Well, you know, you don't have a choice. He's got to go play, and that's the guy's got to go be ready to go. And you know, they got enough good players, though, that I, I wouldn't worry too much about them. As long as Ben Roethlisberger is upright, they'll be fine. And I, I think they beat Denver. And you can't mention the Pittsburgh Steelers without mentioning James Harrison. They have a great uh, linebacking core, also with Lamar uh, Woodley. And you look at James Harrison. This has been a player that has got a big knock in this league. He's been a repeat offender, and he's got suspended this year. I asked this question to former Jets defensive tackle Marty Lyons. Do you think James Harrison is a dirty player, and do you think the NFL is getting soft under Roger Goodell's new rules? Oh, I don't think I don't think they're getting soft. I think they're reacting to 
the concussion issues, and sometimes the pendulum can swing too far the other way, but they had to do something. They had to address it uh, and make sure they get a handle on exactly these concussions and, and, and figure out exactly the best way to care for them. So I think, you know, Commissioner Goodell is is doing the prudent thing and trying to make sure that, you know, if you're going to err, you err on the safe side, especially when you talk about a guy's head. So, but as far as James Harris, I don't think he's a dirty player. I think he's an aggressive, tough player, and, and uh, uh, he, he walks a fine line. Uh, and so, you know, but yeah, I, I don't think, you know, I don't think he's malicious. Maybe he is. I mean, the, 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 was, he didn't help himself with that interview he did this past year in the off season. Some of the things he said because he kind of puts a target on his back. But uh, I think he just he tries to play the game pretty tough and physical, and sometimes he crosses the line. Tony, a few more questions right before we let you run. The Detroit Lions, uh, they've been in the negative spotlight this year, although they have had a successful season. And Dominican Sue has had that stomping incident. And then the week after that, uh, Pettigrew had a ton of unnecessary roughness penalties. It's a tough task this week going up against the Saints. They have to knock that crap off. Do you think the Detroit Lions are mature enough to beat the New Orleans Saints? I don't care if they're mature enough or not. They're not good enough. You know, I, I, I don't think. <laughs> I agree. They're not going to slow down, you know, Drew Brees in that offense. I, I just think Drew Brees is playing as good a football as anybody in the NFL, and they're they're got things going right now, and they're playing better defensively. I just don't think they have enough the Detroit Lions to keep up with the Saints. So you know, that's a good Detroit team. They're young. They make some stupid mistakes. I think Jim Schwartz is doing a good job, and I think he'll continue to get that cleaned up. But they can play a a penalty-free game, and they're still not going to beat the Saints. I don't think. You know, there's been so many good quarterbacks in the league this year. We've had numerous quarterbacks throw for over 5,000 yards or very close to it. And the two in the in the AFC and the NFC that have been phenomenal have been Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees. Who would you vote for the MVP this year? Number 12 or number 9? Uh, I'll go with Aaron Rodgers. I think I'd give, you know, in a perfect world, I'd give Drew Brees the offensive player of the year because what he's done stats-wise, but... I think overall, if you look at the entire year and what Aaron Rodgers has done and meant to that Green Bay team, I think uh, I'd give it to him. But, uh, you know, it's so close. You probably can't go wrong with either guy. Tony, tell me a little bit more about the great work that you do with your charity, please. Well, yeah, we do after school programs here in Jacksonville. We work with almost 100 kids every day, and uh, we focus on uh, uh, education and, and uh, character development. We're a faith based organization. And, uh, we have kids from kindergarten up through seventh grade, excuse me, eighth grade, and we have uh, we continue to add a grade, a grade each year. We have two facilities, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Tony, there's no doubt about it. You do a great job. You had a great NFL career, and now you're having a great career after your NFL playing days. And I know there were some rumors that you were getting involved in politics. Any chance you run? for president this upcoming election? Because I'll tell you this, the Republicans, it's wide open. Yeah, I don't think so. I, <laughs> I, 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 I can barely run my own house with my five kids. I'm not going to try to run the country. Tony, thanks so much. I appreciate the time. Enjoy the games on uh, Saturday and Sunday, and best of luck to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Tony Paselli joining us right there on the Peerless Boilers Hotline. Peerless builds America's best boilers.